I'm going to show you how to do a sleeper raised garden bed. The tools for the job we need are our important safety equipment, our hammer, drill bits, ratchet, spanner, tape measure, pencil, our levels, our shovel, power tools and of course our squares. The materials we need for the job are our concrete, our fixings and of course our sleepers. First step in the process is picking the location to put your sleeper raised garden bed. Things you have to take into consideration are the sun, shade and wind, depending on what plants you want to put in your planter box. We've picked our location in the backyard. It gets the morning sun and also gets the afternoon shade. Now we're governed by our access panel here, so we're going to come off the face of it and work back. Now we're also governed by the height of our deck there. For aesthetic reasons, we're going to come off the bottom of that deck and bring it out level. Because we've got our access hatch, we're going to be coming flush off the face of it, so we're going to go the thickness of one sleeper plus the width of our support that we're going to fix to the wall. Now we've got this end done, we go down the other end and do the same off the other end off the deck. So now that we've got our end supports marked out, we're going to measure the distance from that point to that point there, halve the distance so I've got a centre point to fix our support to. So now that we've got our marks on the wall for our set out, we're going to grab our level and plumb those lines down. Now that we've got our centre mark, we're going to measure half the distance of our sleeper either side of that centre mark and then plumb that line down. Now the next step in the process is to level a line from the bottom of our deck there all the way across the wall where our supports go to know the height of our sleeper bed. Now we've got the positions of our supports marked out. It's just a matter of measuring up to the top of our sleeper bed now I'll transfer my measurement to the sleeper and then cut it to size. Now that we've got our supports cut, we're going to go ahead and mark out the measurements for our holes. Because we've got a short support, we're going to go for two fixings in it, one at the top and one at the bottom. Now if you've got a longer support, it's advisable to also put one in the middle. When marking out your, your holes, it's also important to measure half the distance of your, the width of your sleeper and then that will be where your hole goes. So now that we've got the position of our holes marked on the timber, we're going to go ahead and drill them. We're going to use the spade bit to countersink our diner bolt so it can sit into the timber. So now that we've got our holes countersunk, we're going to change drill bits and drill all the way through the bit of timber. Now that we've got our holes drilled in our bit of timber, we're going to go ahead and drill our holes into the wall with our hammer drill. Now we've done two marks, so I know where my holes are, and we're going to go ahead and drill the rest of the hole. Now we've done two holes into the wall, we can go ahead and fix our support to the wall with our diner bolts. So it's also important to remember that when you're putting your diner bolt in, to pull it out a little bit to flare it, so it'll bite in, so it'll give you the ability to tighten it up. Now that we've got our supports fixed to the wall, we're going to go ahead and measure our sleepers to fix to our supports. Now we're going to go ahead and fix our sleeper to our supports. We're going to go flush with the top of the supports, fixing it with batten screws. So now that we've got this end fixed off, we're going to go down the other end and repeat the process. Now that we've got each end fixed off, we're going to go ahead and repeat the process on each of the supports, remembering to put two batten screws on each support. Now that we've got our two sleepers fixed to the supports, we're going to go ahead and dig out the bottom to allow clearance to put our bottom sleeper in. A good handy tip is to have an offcut of sleeper there, just to give you a gauge of how far you have to dig down. The next thing we have to do is dig along this side and along the face to give us clearance to put three sleepers in. Now that we've dug the soil out to give us clearance for our sleepers, we've cut our end pieces to our required measurement. Now it's time to go ahead and fix them to the ends with our batten screws. Now that we've got it screwed in, we're going to use our level and we're going to use soil to pack underneath it to keep it level. Now that we've got it level, we can go ahead and place the second screw in the bottom of the sleeper. We're going to repeat the process with the top two and down the other end as well. Now that we've got our ends fixed into position, we're going to go ahead and dig our holes for our supports at the front. Now it's important to remember to dig your hole as deep, as high as your supports coming out the ground. 
and the front supports will go in line with the back supports. Now it's also important to remember that when you're digging to watch out for any pipes or services that may be in the ground. Now that we've got our holes dug, we've cut our front supports, double the length of the supports at the back, allowing for them to sit in the hole. But also remember to leave 50 to 100 mil below the top line of the sleeper to allow for the dirt to cover it when it gets put in the garden bed. Now we're going to go ahead and fix our front supports to our side sleepers, fixing it in with batten screws. Now that we've got our front supports in, we've taken a measurement from our outside points, we've pre-cut our timber, now it's time to fix it to our front supports. It'll sit flush with the top of the sleepers there at either end. Now that we've got both ends fixed off, we're going to go ahead and repeat the process with the bottom two sleepers. Now we've got everything all fixed off, it's important that we get our square and our level to go around and make sure that everything's square and level and concrete in our front supports. Now I've mixed up some concrete, it's important just to follow the instructions on the back of the packet when mixing it. Remembering to bring the concrete up to 100mm below the soil level. Now we let the concrete go off just for the final step. Now that we've got our garden bed built, we're going to go about installing our core flute. You can also use black plastic. The reason why you do this is to stop soil and water leaching out between the joins. Now we've already cut ours to size, it's just a simple case of putting it in to where you're happy and then fixing it off with some galvanised clouts. And that's how you go about building a sleeper raised garden bed. Now you're ready to plant your herbs, we'll create a wonderful feature for your garden and you've got beautiful fresh herbs for when you're cooking your next meal. Mm -hmm.